This week on The Splash, Dylan Tatum commits to college. We visit the West Bloomfield Library, and then we head over to the West Bloomfield Fire Department open house. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. All so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash, I'm Maddie Mustin. With the West Bloomfield varsity football team excelling this season, one of their star seniors is also excelling in his own way. Senior four-star recruit Dylan Tatum has announced his commitment to play football next year at Michigan State University. I attended the exciting commitment party to see what this announcement means for him and the team. After receiving offers from schools such as Michigan and Notre Dame, four-star defensive back Dylan Tatum announced his commitment to play football for Michigan State University next year. I talked with Dylan and his coach Tyrese Grace about the decision. Yes, sir. Yeah. Michigan State University. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a blessing. Um, I just want to take the guys to the future, you know. Hey, we're just going to go win games, win Big Ten championships, and go win the national championship. <laughs> I'm most excited about winning games and getting better. Uh, that's the biggest goal. And taking in everything that I can learn and hopefully going to that next level after college. Um, I mean, they, they've been really well. I mean, I'm just taking in everything. Like, he's a great coach. He has a lot of wisdom, a lot of under his belt and I feel like it's going to be great. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting better and having the best time in college and enjoying it. Go White. <laughs> all the emotions are high all around the program. Uh, we're excited for Dylan. I think uh, I've been knowing Dylan for four years now, going on four years, even, even when he was in the youth league, to see him go from little league to potentially being at the next level is exciting for us, and we're excited for him and happy for his family. To pick a great program like Michigan State is, uh, is a great for our program to see players going all over. We got players from all over the country that came through our program, West Bloomfield, and then we, we continue that uh, that channel into to Michigan State. Uh, we have a player that's there now in Trey Mosley. He'll be our third player going to Michigan State since I've been here. The first was uh, Tristan Jackson, who eventually tr uh, transferred over to Syracuse. But this is the third player that comes from our program going to Michigan State, so we're excited to keep that uh, that, that outlet open for us. You know, Dylan, you know, we always look at Dylan as a D-back. Um, some people look at him because he's placed so many different positions for him, for us. Dylan's truly a D-back in my eyes. Uh, he's been developed at that position. Uh, I see him as a nickel, as a corner at the next level. So I think Michigan State's gonna get a talented athlete who can play all over the field for that. With Michigan State now having four of the top 10 prospects for the state of Michigan, they're looking great for next season, especially with a talented athlete like Dylan Tatum. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Maddie Mustin. School is in full swing, and that means that the West Bloomfield Library has lots to offer this fall. Director of the West Bloomfield Public Library, Kathy Russ, talks to us about what you need to know visiting the library and what they have to offer. Splash reporter Jake Kustosh has the story. The West Bloomfield Public Library, like many groups, has pivoted during the pandemic. So what should we know if we plan on visiting sometime soon? Well, so this is a, you know, fall is always a busy time at the library. Um, in any, in any, you know, year, um, the pandemic has changed things, obviously. But um, I think the biggest news that I'd like to share is that the library has restored its pre-pandemic hours. So Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and then Friday and Saturday, 9 till 6 p.m., and then Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m. So, um, you know, previously um, we were closing a little bit earlier in the summertime at seven o'clock. And um, so we're back with, with all of those hours. Um, another thing that I think is really important to make sure that the community knows, especially the students in the community, uh, the study rooms are open. People are welcome to come back and study. There are no time limits. Um, to be in the building and, um, you know, West Bloomfield Township residents and residents of our contract communities, which are Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake and Kego Harbor are welcome to reserve the study rooms and make use of them. So we're really excited about that. But why visit the library? Why should we get a library card? 
why wouldn't people get a library card? Um, lots of reasons to get a library card. Um, the first is it gains you access to an absolute wealth of library materials. The library is not just about books. I can't say this enough, but there are um, learning databases for people who are students um, to help you with your homework. If you're looking for a job, all kinds of career resources. If you just want to kick back and enjoy life a little bit, we've got streaming services for music and for video. And I think the best part is you also have access to librarians and library staff who can help you with whatever you might need help with. And it's paid for by your tax dollars. So you have already paid for the service. So we really want you to use it because you've paid for it. And that's why we're here. We like to serve the public. We love our community and we want to help you. So that's why you should get a library card if you haven't already. Programs and events. You know the library has plenty of programs and events. So let's have Kathy tell us the latest about their upcoming programs and events. So I want to mention just to make sure that the audience knows that all of the library's programs right now are virtual. So they are um, occurring by Zoom and you can go to the library's event calendar on the library's website to sign up and we will send you the Zoom link. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're still, you know, with the surge of the Delta variant, very hesitant to bring large groups of people together. Um, and our programs always attract a, a large crowd. And at this point, we just don't want to um, encourage that or become a hot spot. If the library became a hot spot or you know, uh, uh, people came down with the virus, we might have to close. And we don't want to do that. We've had a great track record of being open since June of 2020. And so that's why we made the decision to keep programming virtual, even for kids, at least through the end of this year. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Jay Kustash. For more information, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash West Bloomfield Library 21. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we will find out more about the fire safety in the greater West Bloomfield community. We may come from different organizations, but we work together to protect the Huron River for everyone. Most of the pollution that goes into our rivers is carried by rainwater that flows off of roads, parking lots, and rooftops. The leaves and bark of a single tree can retain a surprising amount of rainwater. Depending on its size and species, it could be 100 gallons or more. It is estimated that an urban forest can reduce annual runoff by up to 7%. Here's one thing that we know can help keep our water clean. Plant a tree. Plant a tree. Plant a tree. There's one water and it's ours to protect. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Muschin. Education of basic fire knowledge is one of the most fundamental lessons anyone can learn at a young age. West Bloomfield Fire Department hosted their annual open house to educate the community about fire safety in their homes. Kevin Brown visited the open house to give us more information. We're here at Open House today, uh, 2021's Open House, and the theme this year is Know the Sounds of Safety. With last year's Open House stifled by the early COVID-19 pandemic, the West Bloomfield Fire Department is dedicated to teaching the community what to look out for and what to do in case of a fire. Know when it's a smoke detector, know if it's a CO detector and how those things work, so we have those on display here. We've set one up for smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors, so part of that know the sound of safety. Stop, drop, and roll for the kids, uh, how to crawl under smoke and stay low. We've got a, a display in the kitchen talking about kitchen safety. Cooking fires here in West Bloomfield is the number one cause of fires here, and it's the number one cause of fires nationwide. And we do a, a kitchen fire demonstration to show how easy it is to stop a kitchen fire from growing and how to do it safely. And then we've also got our display on the north side of the building where we show uh, the crews how they cut a car apart to get at somebody in a car accident. From jaws of life to paramedic equipment, the fire department pulled out all the stops to show the community what they do. Plus, there was even room for a few other services making a difference in our lives, little by little. 
The other people that are here, we've got Alana's Foundation, a great foundation that was started here in West Bloomfield. Unfortunately, Alana was a young girl that I actually transported before she died, and she, she died of the flu, a simple thing that a shot could, could have prevented. So her family took that challenge and turned it into something great, and we do hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, flu shots every year thanks to that foundation helping people get the flu shot. We've got Great Lakes uh, duct cleaning service here. They're a valuable, valuable part of fire prevention. Cleaning out your ducts, your dryer vents, all the duct work that all that stuff builds up in. If it builds up in there, the airflow can't get out. The heat builds up in there, and eventually you'll have a dryer fire. We have probably half a dozen or more just in West Bloomfield every single year. I, I say it's a win. We got a lot of people through here and a lot of people were able to learn some new safety things and, and meet people that we as the fire department don't typically meet. That's what this event is about, is meeting our customers that we don't get to meet on calls, thankfully, because they're younger crowds usually. So all in all, good day. Please check your smoke detectors. I know you have them in your house, but have you checked them lately? Are they less than 10 years old? Is that battery working? Without that smoke detector, you're not gonna get the notification you need to get out. And we can't be there. It's gonna take us four to six minutes to, be, to get there. Uh, that's four to six minutes that you're without any protection if you don't have that early, early notice, so. Even with not favorable weather conditions, the West Bloomfield Fire Department succeeded in lighting a safe and controlled fire in the heart of West Bloomfielders. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Calvin Brown. Yeah! To find out more about the West Bloomfield Fire Department, you can visit civiccenteredtv.com slash WBFD Open House. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, I'll talk with Eric Wallace, President of Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. Let's catch up. Not online or over text. Let's catch up in a place where time isn't measured in minutes but in moments. Moments made paddling the day away on a crystal blue waterway, or just sitting around a campfire beneath a canopy of twinkling stars. It's time to make up for lost time. This summer, let's catch up with Pure Michigan. When I had questions about my sexual health, family planning clinics put birth control options and pregnancy prevention advice at my fingertips. Confidential, low-cost services are a click away. Visit michigan.gov slash family planning. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Mushkin. This week, I'm joined by Eric Wallace, president of the Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm good, Maddie. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Can you tell us a little bit about your position as the president of Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital and how that has changed um, your position during the ongoing pandemic? Sure, uh, really I think the simplest way to explain my role here is that um, I'm kind of responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of, of the hospital at campus here. And uh, you know, by background, I'm a, I'm a nurse um, and so I've spent most of my life in, in the hospital setting. I think really what has changed over the last you know, 18 months as we've gone through this pandemic is that um, many of the uh, things that we would normally do as a hospital, we've not been able to do. Um, you know, the acute care, taking care of patients pieces, um, we continue to, to kind of chug right along. Um, but a lot of the things that we would normally do for outreach to the community or having even the community in the building uh, for wellness events, those kind of things have been a little harder to do uh, while we've been in the midst of this pandemic. And so um, a lot of uh, little day-to-day -day things that are different, um, but, but generally we're still here to serve the community and, and uh, you know, hopefully be a place of, of healing for uh, the folks that we serve here. And the pandemic has affected a lot of businesses, specifically with worker shortages, um, with staff shortages. Can you explain a little bit how that has affected Henry Ford and what you're doing with uh, the new hiring events that you are hosting? Yeah, so I think really two things um, that come to mind when it comes to our workforce. One is that what we've seen, just like every other industry out there, is that a lot of the folks who would normally come and, and be with us as part of our team and entry-level roles, um, that workforce just hasn't returned uh, to be back looking for jobs. And so when you look at some of our um, entry-level roles, culinary team members, EVS or environmental services team members, 
uh, folks who you know answer phones, uh, make appointments, those kind of things. It's been a little tougher to fill some of those roles um, as as we've come out of the the big waves of the pandemic. So that's one area. I think the other area is that when you look at our clinical workforce, um, nurses, um, you know, technicians, those kind of folks. Um, a lot of those folks that, as we've gone through this, have decided that um, you know maybe it's a good time to retire, step away from the workforce. Um, and you know, nationally, we're we're looking at shortages, particularly in some of our our, our nursing roles. And so we're trying to do new and creative things um, to to attract folks back into the workforce. Um, and so recently, we've announced uh, for across the Henry Ford system. Um, that we are going to be doing some of these hiring uh, job fairs. Um, and so instead of asking folks to go online, put in an application, you know, wait for somebody to call them back and then hope to get an appointment and an interview, what we're saying to folks is on October 7th on the West Bloomfield campus, uh, from 1 to 4 p.m., if you might be interested in being one of our team members, um, we just want you to show up. Um, we're going to do on-site interviews that day. We're going to let you, you know, maybe get to see the building a little bit, get to know the folks that you might be working for, um, and potentially even walk out of there the same day with a job offer. Um, and so we're just trying to make it easier um, and not quite have as much of the red tape um, that sometimes is part of the job search. Um, and so we want to get to know them. We want them to get to know us, and, and hopefully it's a good match. And in addition to these job fairs that you guys are hosting, you also have a Senior Health and Wellness Expo. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's, it's as I said, you know, part of our commitment to this community is we're not just the place that you come to when, when you're sick. Um, and so we've always really valued the partnerships that we have in our community. And one of those is with the West Bloomfield Parks Department. And so on Friday, October 22nd, we're going to be partnered with, with them on their uh, Senior Health and Wellness Expo. And so that day at their Connect building on Orchard Lake Road uh, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., um, we're going to be a big part of, of that Senior Health and Wellness Expo. Um, and so we hope to see folks in the community stop by um, and see some of the resources that uh, are offered throughout the community and how, how we can maybe have just a little bit of normalcy that we're used to um, from previous years. So we're, we're very much uh, excited to be part of, part of that uh, event again here in 2021. And are there any other upcoming events that you're going to be having this fall or anything else you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I think, you know, another one of those places that we continue to, to partner and, and look at how do we support the community is we have a great partnership with the Detroit Institute of Arts. Um, and we have this thing that we call the Healing Arts Gallery Talk. Um, and so uh, this year, October 12th, uh, is the next one of those that's coming up. It's a free event. Um, it's a WebEx event, so it's something that's online. Um, but folks really have the opportunity to learn about how art heals uh, and as part of having a healing environment and, and how we can uh, you know, kind of create that environment in our community. So another great event that, that we're proud to be a part of in partnership um, and really hope that people can uh, get signed up and, and take, take advantage of that. Thank you for sharing with us, Eric. Yeah, absolutely, thank you again for having me. Once again, we've been joined by Eric Wallace, president of Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. We're going to take one final break and when we return, We'll spotlight someone from right here in our community who is leading the West Bloomfield Jewish community in faith through his time at Temple Shear Shalom. Better reproductive health is in our hands. When I needed an STI test. Help getting on the pill. My annual wellness visit. Advice on how to be safe. Help was at my fingertips. Family planning clinics offer confidential, low-cost services to young adults like us. Get started at michigan.gov slash family planning. I'll be seeing you in all of my favorite places with laughter and warm embraces all day through. The park where we play the stoop across the way That favorite cookie smell And Big Bird tree we love so well I'll be seeing you I'll be seeing you 
With free COVID-19 vaccines, sunnier days are ahead. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org. I'll be seeing you. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Maddie Mushkin. Now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week. This is where we highlight special people in our community who are inspiring and providing towards others. This week's recipient is Rabbi Michael Moskowitz, Rabbi at Temple Shir Shalom. Before coming a rabbi at Temple Shir Shalom, Rabbi Mike grew up in St. Louis and went on to study at Duke University and Hebrew Union College. Since his first year as rabbi at Temple Shir Shalom in 1995, Rabbi Mike has grown the community from 500 families to over 900 families joined in worship together. When he is not worshiping with the community at Temple Shir Shalom, Rabbi Moskowitz is frequently engaged with the community through helping those in need, studying with the congregates of Temple Shir Shalom, or connecting with the youth in the community. Rabbi Mike believes that Judaism is about building relationships and connecting with one another through time shared which he practices each day. Rabbi Moskowitz has introduced new programs and ideas to Temple Shir Shalom that allow all members of the community to worship and celebrate Judaism. Over his 25 years as a rabbi at Temple Shir Shalom, he has attended numerous trips to Israel and local retreats with youth and their families. If you know someone who is making a positive difference, let us know and message us on social media with any and all suggestions because we want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community. And that's it for this week's show. You can watch new episodes anytime online in HD on civiccentertv.com, Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. on Civic Center TV, on Comcast Channel 15 and at t Channel 99. Follow us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Civic Center TV and Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kegel Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you for watching The Splash.